Will you hold the gems after 2.0 goes live? That was my PTR account and 2.0 will not carry over any progress that anyone has made in the open beta. So now it's purely for experimentation. All right, so this is going to be a replay analysis for Corazim on the right side team. I thought the map, was it called Dragonshire? But it's certainly Sky Temple. Yeah, okay, so for Sky Temple, uh, he's Karozim in this draft. Let's just take a look at what this draft means for his team. We'll try to keep it short so we don't have to pass too long. Greetings, he friend. is Karozim with Iron Fist in a draft with a melee assassin, ranged assassin, a, a full healer, and a warrior. And he's a secondary healer. Karozim can offer some healing. Then. In terms of the talent build, he went for Iron Fist, which is good. It's probably best even if you're solo support Karazim. Just because the amount of movement speed that you get from it is probably more valuable than the heals. To save yourself from harm and be a bit more aggressive. Uh, we will check from the vision that he possesses. We can ask ourselves, should he be going for Divine Palm or Seven Sided Strike? I think the answer is not super easy. Lucio is most likely going to get Sound Barrier because it's the most popular alt. But I think Lucio might be better off getting the Reverse Amp since he's a secondary healer. But if he does go Sound Barrier, that means that both his healing and his shield could prevent Divine Palm from popping when you expect it to. Now you can play around that. If you see someone is certainly going to get bursted down you can use Divine Bomb to save them. This is maybe for godly Karazims. Um, but you do have to deal with uh, grouping up leading into a silence and grouping up leading into a possible apocalypse. These are risks. Furthermore, if you go for seven sided strike on the other side, you might have to contend with shield wall on Varian. Now, I'm not sure he's really going for that. I think probably he is. But it could be an old patch with the stun. We can see he's going for Lion's Maul as well. So I would say both alts are okay. So long as you use them well. And I think I'm leaning slightly towards 7 sided strike. It's pretty nice even against a 1 on 1 against Sylvanas or so. So following Kara team. You can see that he is uh, part of the warrior double support lane. I'd like to take exception with the exact split here a little bit just because you don't put your three most survivable characters in a lane together and leave Vala by herself. That doesn't make sense to me. If anything, Lucio should be in the Vala lane and Karazim can go and pretend he's a melee assassin in any lane, gank whatever lane he wants. Maybe go and hit Falstad. I think that might have the best uh, value here. This whole trade here is like super random and pointless like i don't think you have enough kill pressure here to kill any of those three unless they want to die you have your best damage Greetings, north friend. and south and the funny thing is yeah see this is this was an accident waiting to happen it doesn't make sense there was no uh kill pressure here so what you can do if you are Kalasin is to move yourself away from this situation so you make the odds on your side worse so that your team is not as willing to do that 3v3 all the time. You had the illusion of equality here, but you had the worst matchup, so just leave. Uh, Karazim could be solo top, Vala could be mid, then you suddenly have kill pressure. Vala, Johanna, Lucio, that's okay. But you should never go to the same lane as the other support. Unless, uh, you know, it's a double support Illidan type of uh, lane. Then you can do a lot of pressure. Ragnaros is starting to double soak, that's, uh, that's pretty good. There's a lot of things that can be said for the entire game, but I'd really like to focus mostly on, on Kalasin here, the, the Karazim, because we can't control everyone. He takes Earth Ally, look at how many auto attackers the opponent have, a lot, Vregar and Falstad and Varian. And by the way, it's Warbringer, which still had the stun, so you can see this game is a little bit ago. Unfortunately, lacks some relevance with that talent, but we take the replays uh, that were lined up. Too many people on top, 
you see okay. that the opponent is split 1-1-1. One, one, one. So at worst, you will meet three here. You've got Johanna on the point and three people bodyguarding her and clearing one single wave. You never want to be so inefficient with that. And uh, no one is making any signs of leaving. And you see that Ragnaros is going for mana. In just two minutes, strategically, with rotations, the team has done so bad that you've dropped a full level down. That one takedown, that was almost nothing. And you know, if you see that that's you, by the way, I don't know what the leak is of this game, but if you see that's you, go to another lane, soak XP, and do not fight with them either, because you see, you could be against multiple people. Just literally stand next to the fort and let the XP be absorbed from what your tower kills. Now, Savannah does change that a little bit. Notification text! So you should make an over response against Sylvanas usually because she removes defender's advantage. Okay. Um, all right, here you wanna, oh, you have no earth ally. Here, I think you don't wanna stay. Even if Ragnaros comes and Johanna and you all fight Varian, he's still not gonna die, it's Varian. You're mostly auto attack based, you yourself, and he's got two parries. So even though it looks like a 3v1, I would say chasing here is pointless. You need to ask yourself always when you meet someone, is there any point to this? Is there uh, kill pressure? And I would say there isn't. Not only that, even if you kill him chasing, let's say, one fourth across the map, you will lose this XP and you will lose this XP. So you got stunned. Don't take offense. Don't take it personally. Just leave. Let's see what really happens. I expected him to die here, which is kind of funny. You do get him. You don't lose too much XP mid. And you don't lose XP bottom. So it ends up pretty okay. But that's also because none of them reacted to it. Because they didn't want to or because they weren't near enough. You weren't sure what they were doing because Falstad isn't showing and neither is Sylvanas. So it's kind of the case of chasing a warrior into the fog of war, which I always try to persuade against. You did it, you got away with it, you did get the kill and it was good. But I'm not, I guess you don't just let him, you don't just want to let him go. But I think maybe you just get the XP and the camp might be better. But it worked out, it worked out. So now uh, you're thinking about the second temple phase. And we look at the forge, half-life, full tower. You know, if you do get this camp now, and then you just three-man push top, you negate their global advantage. If you don't do it, they're going to get the bruiser. Sylvanas has shown herself to be a pve -er. So I'm pretty sure that if we look at the vision for this team, Sylvanas is going to go for the left side bruiser camp. And she's going to do that all game, because she loves getting camps by herself. And then you're going to either leave someone here to stop one bruiser camp, which means you don't have Vala. That means you have very little kill pressure here. Because she's basically your number one DPS, even though her build is interesting. But still, she's your number one DPS. And so either you go without Vala to the temple, which will end up poorly, I think. Or you bring Vala and you will lose your top fort. Or you can push with three top and completely ignore the temple. And I think, to be honest, that would be pretty fine. Let's see what Sylvanas is really doing. Yeah, she goes for the camp, as expected. And we look at what you guys are doing. Two men to stop the siege. This is good. You get the camp. That's a good job. He clears. She clears. Now, this siege camp is kind of too late. Because during the temple phase, when you have siege camp in lane, it doesn't do a lot. It's best to get it way early, after the first temple phase ends. And then get your bruiser after that. People show up for the temple anyway. So it's the easiest thing in the world to clear the siege camp as well. It kills minions, but it's cleared up. He wasn't going to move into the temple anyway. He was just waiting here for reinforcements. Vala now leaves. You've got that bruiser camp push. They don't care about the temple, because Sylvanas is special. A specialist, I mean. 
They push with Savannah's fall. You have to deal with the bruiser. Lucio now left for the wave clear. And uh, you're looking to push in here without kill pressure. You can't kill Diablo like this. I would say never ever go for any team fight except if Vala is there. And, and make sure that you do whatever is needed for her to be there. Talent wise, you got the Q, this is good. Also, let's talk about you, Karazim, who you should be focusing. In this game, you should only ever be focusing Sylvanas or Falstad. Not even once should you want to be near Diablo or Varian, because you can't kill them, period. Not by yourself, not without your ult. Um, Rhaegar is okay, but he's got the slow, the lightning shield and so on. And he can uh, mount away. I would say your number one job is to stop Sylvanas from doing her stuff. So you find her here. That's nice. And you got her. So that's... Well, I want to see more of that. When Diablo chases you, make sure to align yourself. Not past... Uh, terrain. So move one step here and then go away. So you see... Varian stunned you first, but it's because you're taking a hike around the corner that Diablo was able to follow up stun you. You used the Earth Ally to try and get away, which is really good, but you died before you could make it. Had you taken one step to the right, you would have been fine. Diablo would have pushed you away and you'll be safe after the Varian stun. Poor Lucio has left a wave clear, which he's very poor at. Um, you're thinking about your talent. I can see why you would delay that pick for a while. He did go for reverse amp. That's a good choice. And you will, you go for what? Still haven't chosen. Oh, poor Lucio has to wave clear by himself. But I think it's time to leave that. He took palm and self cast it, unfortunately. But she's not dead, so that's okay. Uh, you can do Q on a minion and then shift Q on an ally, I think, if you want to uh, double Q away. With shift click, you'll be faster. Lucio with wave clearing mid, died. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so I'm gonna guess that they'll do siege into boss. I think they should do boss right away, but I think they'll do siege into boss. No, they did boss, okay. And I think they can get away with it. You help with the cam. You want to make sure that you use your trait a lot for everything that doesn't need a dash. Don't overuse dash. It does almost no damage. How much? One. Oh, it's one basic attack. Uh. The patriarchs will be pleased. So try to get like hits in on someone that doesn't stun you, and then Q away or something. He let him solo the rest, but now you know you have to stop self. It's true. I would just place Earth Ally here and then start hitting stuff. You'll be you'll be fine, I think. You can always dash away. Yeah, this is bad. They need uh, some people need to come and help here, man. Is she hunting way forward? What? Is this game even gonna be close? It looks like a wash. Yeah, I don't. You you should always Q only to save yourself, or to confirm a kill. And for the rest, just kind of dart around with a W. W also gives fifteen percent move speed, so you can use that or your trait to move around. Okay, you took six cents. Makes a lot of sense. I, <laughs> no pun intended. No other choice here really. With Varian Warbringer stun and Diablo stun. Uh, okay, so. Just a to topic here of uh, map control. Map control is the real and implied pressure that you have over the map. It is tying in with your position, the information you have, and the information they have. And lane presence, like uh, how many mercs and minions are pushing. Hiding information of any kind is 
always a bonus because it makes your opponent more likely to make a wrong decision. If you look at it, three people doing camp, false that is top, Varian is mid. You only know about Varian and you know about false that if you paid attention, right? But everyone here, all five, moved into the lane to clear the mercs and the minions all together. So they know where all five of you are. That means that none of them have to make any kind of sacrifices to their efficiency of doing things. Varian can push here if he wants, mount up and walk away. Falstad can push here and kill a tower with all of his abilities, including bow roll if he wants to. These three can get a camp. Now, if they didn't know, if uh, only two clear and the other three hide or something, you you have a Falstad has to be more careful, Varian has to be more careful, and so on. So. Uh, I would really recommend against whatever character you play to just show up in the same lane as your buddy. Same thing if you approach a watchtower. The five of you are here, one moves in to get the watchtower, just stay at the edge, don't show, and only go in once it's been capped. There are exceptions. Sometimes the five of you making it past the watchtower to here is going to be the best move, but that always needs to be a conscious decision. Do I or do I not show? You've turned on your E, but but of course. Oh, okay. Let me see about mechanics. Okay. You uh, you eat and you followed her, even though she hunting wave there. You want to try and anticipate that. Uh, she has a wind runner, but Karazim can actually chase her. Once you sell, she hunting wave there. Start moving that direction. Get ready to cue her. Play, and then either you keep walking with uh, healing to catch up, or you use Earth Ally to do a double dash. I really think it'll be nice if you can uh, keep up with her. And you could have. Nice bomb, good job. Okay, this looks like the fight that might turn it around a bit. This is such a good start to the fight. Feels bad. Uh, where are you? You tried to save Vala, yeah? Okay. You use your Q like a, like a hungering arrow and uh, you need to use it as a really precious resource. If we just look at you, you have three Qs. Uh, where are you? Here, yeah? Okay. You just healed, but everyone was still full. So really save it till everyone starts dropping a bit. You Q'd twice here, but it doesn't do anything. Just really try to stutter step. Auto attack, auto attack, move, auto attack. Don't use any abilities other than that. Uh, you could be casting E at any time here during this uh, engage and just start punching things, right? And your W should have still been available. Now, during this time, uh, I know that it's very chaotic, so I'm pretty sure you probably don't have full uh, vision of all this. But the way Vala is moving, she needs protection against Falstad specifically, or you can kill Sylvanas. And again, I'm pretty sure that I or you would not you know, be 100% cognizant of it, just like it's past here. You do see that, so that's a good job. Uh, you queued on Vala, I think. Yeah, you queued on Vala. Uh, but you had no heal yet, and also you don't have cleansing touch yet. Now you use a heal. Your E is available. You can either jump away or you can start hitting things. You just queued again on Falstad, even though he's right next to you. And Deadly Reach increases your attack range by 100%. And it actually makes it 3.6 your range. A little bit more than Probius, a little bit less than Greetings, um, Cassia, the Java Zone. And you needed it for escape. Uh, you, can, you can punch him, but you can queue to escape. So right now you still use all your Qs as auto attacks. I think we've covered that appropriately. So it should be 100% over now, and I'm not quite sure why this replay still lasts on. Uh, Savannah's going to go kill herself. They did not capture the temples, even though it's double keep. They did double temple now. Okay. You obviously need to stop both. You can't let these go on. Mm, it's really hard for you to know where, where you should go, actually. Getting the vision is probably a helpful tool. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think this minion wipe should be ignored for now. The five of you here is a problem to me. Because they're still getting top temple. But it's kind of too late to stop it, I guess. But we need more vision here. Like, uh, we need to know what's in this bush. Maybe even an earth ally. Or something like it. Man, this game should be over. So you've got cleansing torch now. Let's see how we can make use of that. Okay, engaged by Johanna. <clears throat> Blessed shield. Once that happens, I would recommend placing your earth ally right here. If you place it here, it's going to die to wailing and, and uh, boomerang. Here, it will cover Johanna and most of your allies and be kind of out of the way, not easy to kill. You uh, punched Diablo with your Q, so you don't get the effect of uh, Cleansing Touch, which could be a nice bonus. The 118 damage itself is not really worth it. Try to always use your Q on allies for the most part, unless you're finishing someone. You turn on your E. Uh, you Q'd on Diablo again. And they gusted silence. You heal. And you move in again. This is your time. They just used every heroic. You still have everything. So you need to be super aggressive. Even if you're the crazy one. Like your Karazim, you can definitely get away with a lot. You haven't used Earth Ally yet. It's definitely time to use it now again. Even if it was uh, before as well. I think uh, you place it. A little bit too far forward, I think. But it can uh, chase. Like it's taking a bit too much splash like this. He actually went to kill it. This, uh, this is pretty mad. You're down to one keep. I had a game just like this with Asmodan Laser. Down to one keep one anyway. I don't know if you'll win though. We're trying to get the boss. Team isn't sure. You let go. It's good. Oh, they restarted. I... Okay. Earth ally. Oh, that's a nice of first smash. Earth ally. Uh... Dash to Johanna. Heal. You turn on E. It's good. Still no Earth Ally. There we go. Earth Ally. But no, you didn't use it yet. Oh man, you guys destroyed them. Okay. That was a big turnaround. Lamaro. You have a good map awareness. Uh here to go and stop this it's good i think get some xp maybe keep hitting things i don't know if you guys could have ended i, I don't think so so it's good that you get the xp here get some clear vala nearly died on the camp I have been at this time definitely get the vision stick together as well Yeah, that makes me very worried. What the hell are you doing? What is this? Come on, dude. This imported damage shots on this year's week. Uh, I don't think so. It has a better win rate, and I, I, I think it's a uh, good, it's a good situation in this game. Also, I don't think you need to post analyze, you know, alts before the game is over. Everyone stops moving and talking. Let's focus on the game. You probably mean well, but you know, it's gonna distract. Uh, Jana is behind everyone. I would try to make a very conscious effort to let everyone stay behind Jana except you. Lucio is too aggressive. What did you get at 20? Synesthesia auditiva. Removing all the CC. And peaceful repose. Okay. I think I would have taken Storm Shield, but you're probably afraid that your palm doesn't proc. Okay. So I think Johanna needs to stand on the middle one and you on the top. The two safest characters. You're giving them vision. It's really a big problem. You, you guys should not have given away the Watchtower because it's kind of like uh, defending a football goal. If you stand far forward, you deny access to a triangular area behind you which covers your goal 
but if you stand inside the goal they can easily do a penalty kick and and like make a score you need to way keep this area here as it controls much of the others you now don't know how they spread out their odds they could have had a four-man trap anywhere here's you by himself again oh come on let's see he just used his alt no 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 yeah you and Karas, you and Johanna are the safest. So I need you two never to be together in a situation such as this. This is way too much grouping. Come on, guys. Come on. No. Okay. Uh... Earth ally, yeah? I would place it here in the bush. Not only will it cover you guys, but it also increases information. Um, you're also not hitting anyone because you're trying to get to Vala. You could have used Earth ally, dash, dash to her. Lol. Aha! Bakery palm. Alright. Ah, she didn't have a lot of health left. Heal. Uh oh. It's over, no? Oh! Oh! Are they going to die to this? <laughs> Lol. Diablo could have killed Johanna if he pushed her against the wall. Jeez, man. Man. Okay. Six more temple shots, but they're shields. This is insane. Oh, he's dead. Solo Lucio again. Why 1v4? Stop. Yeah, never ask why, but I I completely get you. I'm I've done it before as well. We can't trade temples when they have more keeps than us. What the fuck? It's true. Vala was the only one that abandoned the top. The three to four of you stayed in the top, so she realized this needs to be stopped. But she didn't have time to write it during. She should have tried to. She's like, no trade. Take both. Kara, go. I don't know if there's time for that. Okay. I think you need to not Q on Diablo ever. He can EQ you. Uh, just uh, come here, walk mounted, place Earth ally, Q your allies, and then Q E on them and then Q away or something. Like distract them. Wait, what did she just do? What did she just do? <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Death boss, yeah. Oh, nice. Hello. All right. That that was a lot of damage. You need to jump on Falstad, and you need to be cognizant of the fact that he's probably going to Mighty Gust. In fact, the way this is going, he's going to freak out. So I would like you to try and walk like this and to dodge the Gust. He did get Diablo, but he was going to die anyway. I would have loved for you to min-max and get Falstad too, because he is the key to stopping the boss. And again, you could have chased him if you do Earth Ally, Q, and then Q on him. But I think you should have flanked. Go for the greedy play, get everything. Gust is down? Really? But... Wait. It... it does, oh! Hold on a sec. Wait. Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the cooldowns. Okay, fair enough. Still, you should have killed him. Even more so. That's a lot of caltrops, Vala. He should be caltropping on the boss there. Okay, you get the boss. Lucio, wave clear. At this point, anything really. Uh, if I were you, I would probably Hearthstone now. Because uh, two people showing at core, it's, it's exposed, there's catapults, boss will probably do a lot. Vala wants to go. 
Uh, if Rag and Jana are going, I guess you and Vala attack. She needs a healer. I must retreat. Oh no, there's too many. Everyone core. Everyone defend. That makes sense. <laughs> nice reverse and bro. Okay. Just... You've got Palm Earth Eye. Just go for someone, man. This is too passive. You should have jumped on Valstad, I think. Nice. Oh my god, get on the point! Ah! Okay, Valstad can fly on the core. And you've got the temple on lockdown. There's two people dead and bosses on the core. I would hardstone or walk away right now. Good, good move, dude. But you did get attacked by that thing. But really good, okay. Nice. No way. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Good job, Collison. All right. Ah, no. You are a god. I'm going to make a shrine. I'm going to make a shrine for Collison. <laughs> Hi, YouTube. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who uploaded this? I feel it too much. Oh. I'll upload it. Okay. Well, thanks for the replay, Kalasin, and everyone else. <laughs> Come here. Come here, Jamie. <laughs> Wow! Okay, that was just mean. <laughs> that was just great. 